In today's video, we are going to be using Python code to make ourselves a simple dice game, where we roll two dice and we are trying to get ourselves a double to win the game. If we don't get a double, then we can keep trying until we eventually do get a double. So this is an example of how the game looks. Okay, it starts by saying rolling the dice, it waits a second and then comes up with the two values. So dice one, we rolled a two, and then on dice two, we rolled a one. Since it's not a double, they're not the same number, we have to keep trying. And it gives us the option to roll the dice again. So we just type in Y for yes, and we just keep rolling until we get a double. So I'm just going to keep pressing Y until a double pops up. There we go. Once you do get a double, so two numbers the same, it says you rolled a double. If you want, you can keep playing. Otherwise, just type N for no and press enter, and you can see that the game ends. Okay, so let's get started on making this game. We're going to go to File and New File, so we get a blank page to start with. And now we can get started on making this. First thing we need to do is we need to import a couple of libraries. So that's code that's already been written for us. So I want you to write import up the top. And we're going to bring in the random library first. That's going to allow us to roll the dice. And it's going to come up with a random number each time. And second of all, we're going to import the time function. Okay, and that's just going to be used to pause our code in certain places. Okay, once we've imported those two libraries, we need to create our first variable. Okay, and the first variable we're making today is called roll underscore again. And that's going to be set to yes. So roll again is known as a Boolean variable. Variable. Okay, that means it can have one of two states, either true or false. Or in this case, it's going to be either yes or no. And in this game, basically, it runs off whether the user wants to keep playing or not. If they want to roll the dice again, then roll again will be equal to yes. And that means our game is going to keep playing. If the user doesn't want to keep playing the game, roll again will change to no. And that will stop our game and that will be the end of it. Okay, so what we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to create a loop. And it's going to basically loop some code over and over again, or roll the dice over and over again, until the user says they don't want to play anymore. Okay, so let's start by making the loop. And it's going to be a while loop. And it's while roll underscore again is equal to yes. Okay, that's roll again just there. So while that variable is equal to yes, then we're going to process some code. So after yes, put in a colon. That's going to open up a block, and you'll see your mouse cursor will become indented, showing that we're inside the while loop now. So this is the code we're going to process while the user wants to keep playing our game and rolling the dice. Okay, so we're going to start by writing um, print, and on a new line, so backslash n, don't put a space here, just write rolling the dice. And put dot dot dot, close your quotation marks, close your bracket off, and that will print on the screen, rolling the dice. After that, we're going to pause our code for one second. So, whoops, so it kind of um, feels like the computer is actually rolling some physical dice, even though it's not. So what we do is write time.sleep. So we're accessing the time library here. And inside of the time library, there's a function called sleep. We're going to sleep it for one second. Okay, so rolling the dice will appear on the screen. Then we sleep our code for one second. After that, we can roll our dice and print the values on the screen. Okay, so to roll our dice, what we need to do is create two new variables. So we're going to have dice 1 and dice 2. Okay, remember with variable names, you can't have spaces in them, so I've just put that all as one word. We'll start with dice 1. Okay, to roll the dice, we'll write dice 1 equals. We're going to access the random library now. Remember we imported the random library at the top here. Okay, so I want you to write the word random. And in the random library, we're going to access a function called randint. And that means random integer. So we're going to come up with a random number. Once you write randint in brackets, you need to give it the range uh, that you're working between. So with the first number, comma, and then the second number. Because a dice has six sides, we start on number one. And we can have any value between 1 and 6. Okay. Dice 2 is going to be the same. So random dot randint. Then in brackets, 1, comma, 6. So this is basically rolling the dice for dice 1. Picks a random integer between the values 1 and 6. 
For dice 2, it's going to do the same. It'll pick another random integer between the values of 1 and 6. Okay, and once it's picked those, it's going to store them in the variables dice 1 and dice 2. We now need to print those variables onto the screen so we can show the player what they actually rolled. Okay, so we're going to write the word print, and in brackets here, we're going to write the values are, let's put colon, close the quotation marks and brackets, and on the next line we will print those two values. So again, print, I'm going to write dice 1 equals, oh yeah, we'll just leave equals, dice 1 equals, Close the quotation marks there, because we don't need a space there. Put a comma and write dice 1. So what that does is writes on the screen dice 1 equals, and it takes the value from dice 1's variable up here and prints it on the screen down here. So whatever number we rolled will appear just there. Now after dice 1, we're going to put a comma, open up some more quotation marks, and then make a new line by using that backslash n. And we're going to write dice 2 equals, and then we're going to close the quotation marks, put a comma, and write dice 2. Close the bracket off, and we should now have the two values from up here being printed on the screen. Let's save that and test it out, and we'll see how it's looking so far. It's nowhere near finished, but we'll see what we've got. Okay, let's call it dice game, and I'll go to run. We'll run this module. Oops, I've had the Python window open already. Sorry, the Python shell. We'll just run that again. So we start on a blank page. So rolling the dice. There's the values. And you can see that the game just keeps going. Okay, this is an endless loop at the moment. So what's happening? I'll just kill this window for a minute. We've got this loop here. And while roll again is equal to yes, all of this code here is just going to keep running. Okay, there's no way for roll again to equal no. It's always going to be yes. So that's why our code keeps running. So we have to now come up with a way for the user to change this roll again option to no, just in case they want to finish playing. All right. So let's go down below what we've written. And we're going to put in an if statement now. Okay. We want to give the user a bit of feedback if they've won or not. Okay. So the first thing is going to be if dice one, so that's the variable dice one, is equal to the variable dice 2, which means you've rolled the same number or you've rolled a double. What we're going to do is we're going to print you rolled a double. Okay, and then we'll put in an else statement. So what else do we do if they don't roll a double? Then we're going to print keep trying. Okay, so that's going to give us a little bit of feedback on how our game went. And the final thing to do, we're going to get out of that if statement, so just backspace um, over here, so we're just out of the block of code, but we're still not indented from the left edge of the page yet. We're still inside this while loop. The last thing we want to do is we just want to ask the user if they want to keep playing the game. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them the option to change this variable up here, roll again. We're going to give them the option to change it to a no instead of a yes. So I'll write roll again equals input. So we're going to get some user input. In quotation marks, I just want to do a backslash n to start with. That's going to make a new line. And without putting a space, we'll, write, we'll put in a question, roll the dice again. Put a question mark to show it's a question. And in brackets, put y dash n. So the user knows that they have to type in either yes or no to roll the dice again. Um, put a space, quotation marks closed, close the brackets. That ought to do us. So press Control S to save your game. Press F5 to run it, and we'll see how we're looking. See if it's almost finished. So it rolls the dice, gives us the two values, tells us to keep trying because it's not a double, and now it's stopped repeating the code over and over again. This while loop over here has actually stopped at this point here. So we're waiting for the user to make their mind up. Do they want to play again? Okay, so it tells us to write in Y or N. If I type in Y, there's going to be an issue. The game stops. Okay, I wanted to roll the dice again. And I even typed in Y here for a yes, but it stopped. Okay, so we need to fix that issue. 
The reason that didn't work was this little bit of code just here. So while roll again equals yes, we actually had to type in the word yes to play our game again. We can't just type in the letter Y. So what I'm going to do is just expand on this. I'm going to write in OR, um, roll again equals Y. Okay, and that's going to allow us just to type in the letter Y to play our game again. So let's try that now. I'll just run that code again. So now I should be able to type in the letter Y and press enter. And you can see that it's rolling the dice again. If I type in the word yes, just here, it'll roll the dice again. We can keep playing. Now if I type the word no, it'll stop the game. Alrighty, now if you wanted to be fussy, you could come up here and you could write or roll again equals, and you could put yes with a capital Y. Okay, or you could put in roll again is equal to just a capital Y. Okay, this is just catering for some errors that could pop up in our game. Okay, the users could have caps lock on. They might just write with good punctuation. They might be writing in lowercase. You want to make sure that we've got all the different options there for them to type in yes or Y. Okay, and if they do that, then we just keep playing the game. If we type anything else, then the game stops. Alrighty, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's just have a look again. Is there anything we need to go over here? The main thing you need to know is just this while loop. So while these conditions are being met, so while the user wants to keep playing and they're writing yes, then we just keep running this code here over and over again. As soon as they decide that they don't want to play anymore and they type anything other than yes or why, then this code here, it's just going to stop and it's game over. Alrighty, so that will do us for this video. Hopefully you can expand on that game and make something a little bit cooler in your assignment.